I'll tell you, Pam, it has been a road that's been stuck with adversity, a lot of it along the way, adding to a long list of incredible accomplishments. I really believe that this has been one of Tara Vanderveer's best coaching jobs. And what a season it has been. Tara Vanderveer, first off, made history early in the season when she passed the immortal Pat Summit, most wins ever for a women's basketball coach in Division I, or T-Dog, as her jacket says. They were 11-0 to start the season, six weeks at number one before they lost back-to-back -back games. Fran Belibi with a couple of dunks, and then nine weeks on the road because of COVID protocol in their home county, where Stanford is located, Santa Clara County. And all they did was go out and win the Pac-12 championship, regular and tournament. Well, Atar Vanderveer has said all season that key is the key. That's the Cardinal point guard, Kiana Williams, the All-American, climbing the ranks with one of the best players in Stanford history. Well, Kiana Williams is from San Antonio and is coming back home to play. And we are already underway. Kiana Williams wasted no time as she shoots and misses. You see uh, Utah Valley in the dark uniforms. They are the Wolverines, a school located in Orem, Utah. 13 and six on the season, 10 and four in the WAC. Cameron Brink right away challenged and the rebound taken down by Haley Jones. We take a look at our Capital One starting lineups for the Stanford Cardinal. There's a three for them. A very formidable team. Anna Wilson, one of the best defenders in the country. And right away, a defensive mistake by Utah Valley, leaving Kiana Williams open. She is red hot from three-point land coming off of the Pac-12 Tournament Championship. She was unbelievable in that championship. Williams, number 23 in white. Pac-12 tournament, she shot over 50% from threes. And for Utah Valley, welcome to the dance. Their very first NCAA tournament. That is their head coach, Dan Nielsen, who had been an assistant at BYU under Jeff Judkins for uh, several years. And already we have a player who uh, has some uh, blood on her face. For Utah Valley, that looks like Neha Sohail. Yes, the redshirt junior from El Paso is, uh, has gone to the bench already for them. Ashley Taylor, their athletic trainer. But this Utah Valley team getting into the tournament, they were not the WAC regular season or tournament champions. That was Cal Baptist who were unbeaten and playing in the WNIT. But Cal Baptist in the third year of a four-year waiting period is a transition from Division One to or Division Two to Division One, so they were ineligible, which is kind of heartbreaking. You, you feel for the Lancers of Cal Baptist, the uh, the unbeaten team, unable to play in the NCAA tournament. But uh, Utah Valley, even their head coach Dan Nilsson, agreed that Cal Baptist should have been the representative, but certainly would take the bid because that's the way things were set up before the season even started. That the second place regular season finisher would get the bid if Cal Baptist won the tournament, and that's what happened. Anna Wilson showing some good defense out there for Stanford, the uh, co-defensive player of the year in the Pac-12, along with Aaron McDonald. Yeah, picking up the defensive responsibilities of Maria Carvalho, who was the point guard, the energizer, butter bunny for Utah Valley. But you're right, shout out to Cal Baptist. When you go undefeated and can't get into the NCAA tournament, man, you guys That's had a heck of a season. And they're still playing in the WNIT. They will play Rice tomorrow night as uh, they continue there. And Cameron Brink, after that two-game losing streak, the only two losses of the season, they lost to Colorado and uh, UCLA back-to-back. -back. Brink in the starting lineup and has made a difference as we look at our Capital One starting lineups for Utah Valley. We already saw Sohail go out with the bloody nose, but Josie Williams, number 40, is their key player. Yeah, Josie Williams is their big five player on the inside at 6-5 and she has given this offense stability she comes in more improved this season than the first couple of years of her career was in the transfer portal and going to leave utah valley after the coaching change but coach nielsen convinced her to stay and she's playing her best basketball and he wants to see the team play through her as much as possible and drawing the foul attacking the basket maria carveo Cravio, excuse me, the junior from Portugal, who also was a first-team all-whack performer this year. 
Yeah, as she goes, Utah Valley goes, and this is a very good sign for the Wolverines as Neha Sohail is going to come back into the game, but look like she took quite a hit. But this is a team on the offensive end that you won't see take a lot of transition looks. They like to slow the pace of the game. They are very methodical on the offensive end, a continuity offense, but they do want to get the ball inside to 40 and Josie Williams and establish her early. Ravaglio going one out of two at the line for the Wolverines. And Utah Valley is in a zone right now, but they don't play a lot of zone defense as Haley Jones with a nice pull up. They don't play a lot of zone. They actually play more man to man. We'll probably see some switching man to man. They want to change up their defense and, and keep Stanford off balance. Take a look here. Looks like Josie Williams is trying to establish herself against Cameron Brink and definitely use that off arm extended to displace Brink. It looks like she's okay. Williams called for the offensive foul. Her first, the player that they need to keep on the floor. Now Brink. Nice ball movement. Anna Wilson. They don't depend on her a lot to score, but. Russell Wilson's little sister can do just that. Great ball movement there by Stanford. And we've seen them hit that corner three a couple of times. The first time it was Cameron Brink, your center, and that time it's Anna Wilson. That's how versatile this team is. But nice lob pass there to Williams. I was wondering if Utah Valley would get that look because of the size and length of Stanford, but they executed well. Oh, that's a sweet pass from Jones to find Brink. That's uh, You mentioned the boy Stanford is able to pass the ball. They're, they're just a, a fine-tuned machine so far this season. And they were terrific in the Pac-12 tournament a couple of weeks ago, winning by an average of 31 points per game. That's thrown right to Brink. Jones saw a little lane, took it, but it rimmed out. Brink was unable to come up with it. You already feel the pace of this game. And Stanford has the depth that they can go down the bench, play several players, keep the pace, keep the energy up, and get contributions across the board. I was impressed that they went 12 deep in the Pac-12 tournament and got something from everyone. And then another steal. It's Lexi Hall. Stanford out of the gates quickly. The number one overall seed, 15 to three, first time out. Stanford looking good. The number one overall seed, offensive end, the facilitator, Haley Jones to Brink. It's easy for the Cardinal. Some defense to offense here by Lexi Hall. Hello, Stanford. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Welcome back to San Antonio and the San Antonio Kid. This is a big three because that has tied, Keanu Williams has tied Candace Wiggins for the most made threes in the history of Stanford women's basketball. Vandeveer was a little concerned that Keanu Williams might be a little bit uh, too keyed up, no pun intended, coming to play in her hometown and was hoping that she would be able to settle herself. She has about 40 friends and family in attendance. Limited attendance has been allowed it, uh, in the uh, San Antonio venues for the NCAA tournament. Williams, history. She that ready. breaks the record. The most threes ever for a Stanford Cardinal. Kiana Williams remains on fire. Coming from Vegas in the Pac-12 tournament, Cardinal winning the championship. She went to high school about 11 miles from the Alamo Dome at Wagner High School. So she said it feels like her, word, her worlds are colliding. And oh, 
Fran didn't have enough space there to throw it down, but Pam, I see your fingers crossed. I see you. <laughs> we for almost the dunk. had a dunk. Our Fran Bellini did not do that. And yeah, what a homecoming for Williams. Utah Valley trying to stay in this game, but boy, Stanford just coming out of the gates on fire, especially the hometown kid. Kiana Williams with the record setting three point shot. Gives a point to the crowd. Her parents, Michael and Lachelle Williams, wearing their 23s. They're representing. Absolutely. They have a big cutout of, uh, of Kiana's head as well. See, I didn't Last see the cutout. Yeah, we'll get it on. We got Jimmy Platt directing. He'll get it on. So hot, so hail, who had the bloody nose earlier, able to knock down the shot for Utah Valley. And that's what Neha so hail can do. She can hit the three, but she's also very long and wiry on the perimeter at 6'2". Defensively, she will need to use that length to contest shots. Lacey Hull, number 24, in the game. Tara Vanderveer going to that deep bench already. Hannah Jump, number 33. And that's one of the many things that's so scary about this Stanford team, you've already referenced it, is their depth. And Tara has gone to the bench early. Ashton Prechtel, number 11, also in for the Cardinal. Good defense, Belibi, able to come down with the rebound. So of the players on the floor right now, I don't see any starters out there, LaChina, except for Williams, except for Kiana. So four players off the bench playing already for the Cardinal. Tar Vanderveer understands that this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's also a good way to keep everyone engaged, to go to the bench and get some energy, hull off on that putback. But what a luxury. Lacey Hall, the identical twin sister of Lexi, who starts the uh, two juniors out of Spokane, Washington. Outside shot, off the rim, rebound. Taken down nicely by Jump, and you see that Stanford likes to play at a nice pace. And it feels like Utah Valley is trying to play at Stanford's pace. They need to slow down just a little bit and get to the pace of their offense, which is a little more methodical. What do you see right there? It's the cutout. The, we, the cutout. <laughs> we want to remind you with the head, watch headband. The, I'm doing a promo. The NIT quarterfinals coming up Thursday, 6 Eastern time on ESPN2. It is Mississippi State taking on Richmond. You can also watch it on the ESPN app. A lot of basketball going on. And speaking of the NIT, we are cheering for Cal Baptist. Nothing against Rice, but when you go undefeated, you should win some kind of championship. And is that <laughs> Prechtel knocking down the long ball? You betcha. Already several players on the Stanford roster knocking down the three. You see how good they can be and effective from distance. Rectal with 15 threes now on the season. Had a double-double against USC in the quarterfinals of the Pac-12 tournament. Stanford up 23 to six. There is a good look at Ashton, sophomore out of Colorado Springs. Gives you size, but can also stretch the floor. We saw some toughness on the defensive end. And that's another that, thing about Stanford is that they have so many interchangeable pieces because of how skilled they are at various positions. And Prechtel again. Yeah, Prechtel, even though she averages only 13 minutes a game, 13th in the Pac-12 in blocks, averaging about a, a block a game. And there you see it. And what a luxury. Prechtel is 6'5", coming off the bench. Another three, knocked down for the Wolverines. That's Williams. Bringing Prechtel out to the perimeter, forcing her to guard from three-point range. Utah Valley got it to go. Levy, cross court, Hall, swish for Lacey. Three-point line is open on day one of the NCAA tournament for Stanford. You have really got to get your defense back and set 
when you're playing against this Stanford team because of how quickly they transition from defense to offense, but also the way they can spread the floor. They're going to bring your bigs out. They're going to force everyone to guard the entire quarter court. Oh, with the pickoff, Stanford has hit six of its nine threes in this game. They have been on fire since the Pac-12 tournament from outside. Here's another one from the corner. That missed everything, but Lacey Hall able to bring it down. And the points just keep on coming. Here's another one. If Utah Valley stays in that zone, the way Stanford is shooting the three, seven already in this game is going to be a long night. That's Hannah Jump's turn to get the three as the first quarter comes to a close. It's all Stanford. The biggest story of this tournament happened before it even began when this photo went viral as Thursday and coaches were uh, very concerned to say the least when they saw that they had these dumbbells and that was it compared to what the men had in Indianapolis at the Final Four. So the NCAA listened and they made these additions and improvements and put out these weights in a part of the convention center and they admitted that, that, that it was a miss and that they messed up by not getting the weight room set up earlier. Tara Vandeveer, her statement. A lot of what we've seen this week is evidence of blatant sexism, a purposeful and hurtful. She felt betrayed by the NCAA. She called on university presidents and commissioners to demand accountability. That who made these decisions and why? Women athletes and coaches are done waiting, not just for upgrades of a weight room, but for equity in every facet of life. Yeah, Williams has three threes. You know, Pam, I thought what was interesting about Coach Vanderveer's comments, and we'll get back to that in a moment, but they came out after our Holly Rose did a great interview with Lynn Holzman, the VP of Women's Basketball at the NCAA, where she said it was a miss. She said we fixed it, but for those comments to come out after that, Tara Vanderveer clearly didn't feel like it was fixed and hinted at a bigger issue, not just the weight room, but it's about equity. Haley Jones with the uh, offensive foul. She said this cannot continue to be business as usual. There are necessary changes that need to be made. With the obvious disparity between the women's and men's tournaments, the message that is being sent to our female athletes and women across the world, as Vanderveer continued, is that you are not valued at the same level as your male counterparts. This is wrong and unacceptable. So much effort from so many people has gone into making this tournament happen. If it's worth doing it at all, it is worth doing right. A very strong statement from Tara Vanderveer and something that certainly you've come to expect uh, for, for Tara, who has been a leading voice in this game for so long. I mean, she's a pioneer. The amount of sweat equity Tara Vanderveer has put into the game of basketball won't, won't be matched. And you can imagine the battle she's had to fight throughout her career and, and to see the disappointment in her players. I mean, I, I can't imagine that as a coach to know that your players don't feel appreciated. And, you know, there's just really no excuse for it. And while you are happy to see the NCAA address it, these kind of things cannot happen. The last message we need to send to our young women is that they don't matter, that they're not equal, that all the hard work that they've put in over the last year has not been seen and has not been valued. Now, there were some logistical differences between Indianapolis, where the men are, and San Antonio. Uh, there was there was every intention, Holly Rose reported and, and told us, of uh, another three. That time, Anna oh, so, Okay, wait a minute. Anna Wilson has two threes tonight. Kiana Williams is four of five from distance. They are 10 of 14 from three tonight, LaChina. Come on. Yeah, they're, they hear us talking about the changes that need to be made in our society. And, and they're responding by hitting these threes. But no, in all seriousness, you know, it's why you're happy to see the response. There are bigger conversations that need to be had. There is some accountability that need to be had. And we should mention that it was Stanford strength coach, Allie Kirshner, who first posted the original photo. Thank you for that reminder. Our Holly Rowe always on the job. 
But we want to send a special shout out to Allie because I can't imagine the amount of courage it took to put that out in the way she did. And it really was empowering to see all student athletes come together, the WNBA players. I mean, when have we seen women's basketball as united as we have the last few days, standing up for what they deserve, what they believe? And, and shout out to Allie for, for what she did and that Tara Vanderveer really had her back and you can appreciate that. Also Dawn Staley among those with strong statements, but meanwhile Stanford is uh, sort of announcing their presence with authority in this NCAA tournament. They are the number one overall seed for the first time since 20, excuse me, since 1996. And uh, right now, anybody who thought maybe they didn't deserve it should open up their eyes because they are uh, they are really looking good. And again, not just in this game, but we saw them in the Pac-12 tournament and, and they were just as impressive. Utah Valley just throws up the shot as the uh, shot clock comes to a close. And talk about balance, LaChina. Look at this. I mean, that's incredible. How do you guard that many players on the offensive end when you can spread the floor and everyone is a threat from just about everywhere? I mean, that's what we've seen in the first few minutes of this game. And we've seen a confidence as well and a high level of focus and intensity. Stanford is ready. Williams with the ball in her hands. First time she's missed, but that was a little bit of a desperation with the shot clock winding down. Two on one, at least briefly for the Wolverines. Belibi comes up with the rebound, quickly gets it up to Wilson. This is Stanford's pace right here. Williams left wide open, passed up the three for the two, and hit it. And pass up the shot is what Tar Vanderveer said makes Keanu Williams special because she said we have to call plays for Key. Like she does not like attention. She comes in very understated and is really the, the kind of leader. And I think this team is rallying around her being home in San Antonio and, and wanting to do something special. In fact, Tara said of Keanu Williams that she is like unselfish to a fault. As you mentioned, she would like for her to call her number more often. And any concern that Tara had that maybe she might have the yips, be a little nervous about coming home to play at San Antonio, she came out of the gate hitting threes. Shoot. Looking very confident, ready to go. In her last three games, Kiana Williams has hit 15 of her last 20 threes. 15 of 20. That would be good from two-point range. Break foul, yes. Stanford running some parts of their triangle offense with a pinch post, working off of that Fran Belibi pass in the high post. And it's the extra pass for me from Hull to Brink, threading the needle. And boy, has Cameron Brink come on in the second half of this season, had some foul trouble some body control issues and really had to have a better understanding of how she could be an effective shot blocker without leaving the game, leaving the court. And since she's kind of gotten that straightened out, she's, she's been much better. And Tara Vanderveer reminds her that she's going to get, because she is tall, she said, you're going to get a couple of fouls called on you every game that should not be called. And so she has to be really concerned with the other three and not fouling out. That's a three that drops. And you notice that Utah Valley on the offensive end is much better when they're patient. And that's something that Coach Nielsen talked to us about. He said, you know, when we're, we're taking the first available shot and we're trying to make things happen, Carvalho in particular, when she's looking to score more than facilitate, he said, we're in trouble. He said he would like to play at a faster pace, but right now he doesn't have the players in his second year trying to build towards that brink off the back of the rim as we go inside five minutes to go in the second quarter. Great hustle. There's your co-defensive player of the year. Well, Keanu Williams, maybe you can come home again. 
It's all about the key, the key, the key. And she's got it at home in San Antonio. Kiana Williams cooking. Her parents love it. Stanford rolling. Welcome back. Among the winners today, how about Moon Earth in a career high 24? Baylor with the win. Dawn Staley gets her 500th career victory. South Carolina wins. UConn with a comfortable win as a number one seed as well. Even though Nico Mule, Mule hurt her foot, but uh, teammates hoping that she is okay. And the Stanford Cardinal, the other number one seed right now, look like they're going to roll on. 14-0 so far for the higher, highest, higher seeds, excuse me. How about Georgia Tech? Nell Fortner's club was down 34-17 at the half, came back to beat Stephen F. Austin in overtime. The fighting Nell Fortner's. Nell, yeah, <laughs> took overtime. But Lorella Kubai is just an incredible player i mean her toughness her size at 6-4 her versatility she can will you to a victory just sheer determination but now georgia tech's gonna have to move on to take on a very good west virginia team mike carey boy kaiser gondrasek i mean that is a team that they've always been known for their defense but i think this is one of the best offensive teams he's had in a while and that's going to be quite a matchup yeah that, that's going to be tough Utah Valley has been in a zone, showing some man as well. And a man now doubling on the post. And you know what? Let's pack it up. <laughs> pack it up. It is Keanu Williams night in San Antonio. Five of seven now, as you see, from distance for the local kid. Nothing but Stanford jerseys is... The Wolverines sent everybody back to try to stop Stanford's transition. Nice pass. Whoa. Beautiful. Right into the hands of Hall who made a good cut. Lacey yeah, Stanford's Hall. team speed right now is just blazing on offense. And with backdoor cuts, with screening, action, Utah Valley wanted their goal was to stay in front. Just make Stanford shoot over them. But... The Cardinal really good in moving without the ball. And Coach Nielsen very concerned about the paint points, and Stanford has been getting threes as well as penetrating in the lane. Stanford with 15 assists and only two turnovers tonight. They had 17 turnovers when they played UCLA in the championship game of the Pac-12, and that was one thing when we talked to Tara Vanderveer. She said she would love to clean up, especially they had a sloppy third quarter. Coaches are always going to find stuff that they're not happy with. And it was the third quarter in the turnovers that got to Coach Vandeveer. Yep, she's had turnovers, fouls, didn't want her team to foul, but beautiful backdoor pass from Kiana Williams showing us her entire arsenal, both shooting and passing. Coming up at halftime, the AT&T 5G in the studio. UConn rolling along, Caitlin Clark, she is just... She's just so much fun to watch the Iowa freshman as Iowa got a win. Kelsey, Monica, and Andrea in the studio coming up in two and a half minutes of playing time. Gotta love our studio crews. And we got some of our young bucks on the night team, Kelsey Riggs and Monica, Andrea. Monica played at Georgetown and Andrea, Tennessee Lady Vols. But going back to Caitlin Clark, She's going to meet Ryan Howard. What do you think the scoring's going to be like in that one? <laughs> yeah, that should be a lot of fun in the next round. Iowa and uh, Kentucky. UConn and Syracuse. Syracuse playing in the other part of that draw. And again, nothing but white jerseys underneath the basket. Alyssa Jerome, who is in, a senior from Toronto. And then another three from Lacey Hall. And it was set up by the pass fake. 
just a, just a little pass fake. You have one defender with a decision to make. You look to the corner with the ball, and you're wide open. Stanford continuing to pile it on with their outside shooting. Stanford Into decide nice. Josie Williams. Yeah, good job by Josie Williams on that finish. But Stanford is defensively taking ball screen action away by icing some screens. And they just fought through some screens defensively as well. And that's what Utah Valley needs to do to keep their offense moving. Set solid screens. Bechtel with the miss from the outside. But then Jerome able to uh, tie it up. I mean, this is the little small, subtle things that open up your offense. Little pass fake. Paul just looks to the corner. She's got a shooter down in the left corner. I believe that's jump. Makes the pass fake and the shot's wide open. You know, sometimes to make a play, it's not about putting up the shot immediately. And it's also not even about passing. It's about timing. And the timing was perfect on that ball fake. A foul called against Stanford. A look at Madison Grange, who is the sixth player for this team, junior out of Salt Lake City. Utah Valley coming in, 33rd in the nation in scoring defense. There's a foul and count the basket, giving up on average only 57 points per game, and Stanford's almost got that at the half. Madison Grange with a nice play here to get to the free throw line. She's actually having a great shooting year, has really improved all of her numbers. She's third in the WAC from three-point land, but she's gotten better from the field, from three-point line. Just a lot of confidence, misses that one, but comes into the game not shooting very well, but she's got that potential. Dighton Beak, one of the freshmen, and running, off, running the point and dribbles it off her foot. One of the few turnovers for Stanford. If you're Utah Valley, Valley, you feel like you've been drinking from a water hose. So these good possessions here down the stretch, getting to the free throw line, getting a defensive stop. This is important momentum heading into the locker room. Stanford had gone over nine minutes without a turnover before Van Dighton Beak dribble the ball off her foot. Vandeveer able to get a lot of minutes for her bench players in the first half of this game. Agnes Emma Nopu, a freshman from Australia, number two is in the ball game. There you see her lining up as the free throw after Emma Nopu's foul. Megan Jensen, she's had quite a season, broke her hand earlier in the year, also dealing with some COVID issues. Nice to see her back. But the number one overall seed looking very much like the number one overall seed as they laid it 53 to 20. They lights out from the outside, 12 of 22 from distance. And let's get it over to Kelsey. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One inside the Alamo Dome. Stanford, the number one overall seed with a 33 point lead over Utah Valley, the representative from the WAC. As we take a look at the bracket, the winner of this game will play Oklahoma State on Tuesday. The bottom four teams in the bracket get things going tomorrow afternoon. And so far, Stanford looking like they certainly deserve that number one overall seed, Pam Ward, along with LaChina Robinson. And there's so many superlatives you could throw out there about this Stanford team. They're, they're sharing the ball well. They're hitting threes like nobody's business, especially Keanu Williams. Yeah, I mean, what an impressive first half for the number one overall seed. You know, the quickest release you've seen. I mean, it takes her a minute to kind of dig and get up, but you got to come out and guard her. You got to run her off the three-point line. You can't allow her to give you the facilitator look, because she's not facilitating tonight, she's shooting. And that was a long three, her sixth of the night. Utah Valley responds with the three from the outside for the Wolverines. Carvalho 
gets it to go for long range. And you want to see the response. If you're Coach Nielsen, you know, your team took it on the chin in the first half, but what is the intensity level like? What is the defense like? I like what we're seeing right now from the Wolverines. Stepping it up. And count it. Lexi Hall able to split the defense, draw contact, and has a chance at a three-point play. I thought Hull had gotten away with a travel there, but we'll take a look. Who else? Anna Wilson on the ground, gutting out the possession. And I guess the contact was called before the travel. I don't know about that one. Second foul on Josie Williams. Hull does not complete the three-point play. Coach Dan Nielsen said he just wanted his players to come out and play like you're showing up at a rec league. You don't know who you're going to play. Just go out and play basketball. He knew the task would be daunting. And that's a foul. Brink got a piece of the arm. Josie Williams Coach had Nielsen. two fouls in the first half, so she had to sit. Dan Nielsen told us that and by the way, he's a Texas native. He's got family uh, coming in for this game. He was excited about going uh, Coming back home, said he grew up about an hour and a half away near Austin. But he thinks that Utah Valley, he says it's a diamond in a rough. It's a program that has not been around really that long. It's a school that uh, went right from JUCO to Division One, been Division One since the 3 4 season. But uh, he's very excited about building a program there. You know what I like about Dan Nielsen? is that he was a practice player at BYU. Let me tell you about practice players. I mean, sometimes they're your team's biggest fan. You need them on those days that you don't want to sprint. This is from a player's perspective, right? You're like, okay, we get some rest when the, when the practice team is here. But in all seriousness, you know, uh, the male practice players probably don't get enough credit, you know, and, and how they support their teams on campus. I mean, I remember our practice players were always in the front row for every game. We didn't have a lot of fans. But you just build special relationships over the course of your career. Yeah, he said he got some offers to go to D2 schools, but he said, I knew the game better than I played it. And he gives Coach Jeff Judkins uh, at uh, BYU just a lot of credit. He said he, he started uh, as a practice player, and Coach Judkins gave him more and more responsibilities. Eventually, he became an assistant there. A couple years ago, actually was on the bench when BYU played Stanford in the NCAA tournament. Brink from the outside. And a nice face-up game there from Cameron Brink. But he said he fell in love with it after being a practice player. I mean, you know, that's the thing about women's basketball. Is once you see it, once you're a part of it, you love it. Coming up, the NIT men's quarterfinals. NC State taking on Colorado State. That's coming your way 7 Eastern time Thursday on ESPN and the ESPN app. You can always go to NCAA.com for all of your information. Josie Williams at the free throw line after she was fouled by Brink. So Cameron Brink, we talked about her propensity for picking up fouls earlier in the season. Picked up a couple of quick ones here in the third quarter. And one of the reasons for Josie Williams' improvement is assistant coach Morgan Bailey, who played at BYU. She was the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, an AP Honorable All-American there. And you love to see players come back who played at the college level and want to be coaches, and she's making an impact on this team. And there's a miss. Williams posting up now with Prechtel in. Brink out with a couple of fouls. Nice hustle. But Anderson could not save it. So Stanford right now with 13 threes on the night. Their single game record is 16 threes. NCAA tournament record, as you see, 18, which was Washington back in 2017. And that would have been during the uh, during a pretty good era for them, right? And uh, at the University of Washington, the Kelsey Plum era back in 17. Kelsey Plum. 
What a run. I mean, you think about some of the stars we've had in women's basketball in recent years. Sabrina Ionescu, you think about, about Arike Agumbawale, Morgan Williams. That makes you so excited for what we may see in Utah Valley. Come out the locker room with a different energy. Absolutely. Anderson with the finish, an Idaho native, playing at her third school in three years, finding a home at Utah Valley. Again, ball movement. And again, Williams, but this time she misses it. It's like you're surprised now when it doesn't go in. Running the floor well, drawing contact. And the Wolverines coming out nicely here in this third quarter. Certainly not, they were down 33 at the break, but coming out playing hard. Yeah, you like the fight that you're seeing, and fight is exactly what Carvalho does night in and night out. You talk about a dependable player at the point guard position. Her offense has ebbed and flowed a little bit this year, but she's whack all defensive team member. Often has the assignment of the other team's best player started off in their man on Kiana Williams tonight. And it's got a tough job tonight against the Stanford team between working around screens defensively to trying to run the offense around this very lengthy Stanford squad from one through five. Yeah, by far the, the best competition that they have played this year. Good look at Carvalho, who is from Lisbon, Portugal, has played on some Portuguese national teams. Portugal's given us a few good players as well. The best, Tisha Penichero. <laughs> the best of the best. Jump. This is, so they're cooling off from three which was really the only way they could go after what they did in the first half. Well, I like what we see Utah Valley doing here in the third quarter is using their speed. You know, Stanford is big and long, but there's some backcourt speed on this Utah Valley squad, and they've been using that for more dribble penetration, more looks going to the rim, not settling necessarily for jump, jump shots. Try to get yourself to the free throw line. Stanford only outscoring Utah Valley by one point here in the third quarter. Ohio out of the game now, and that was a tough shot, but again the length off the bench, 6'5", Prechtel just bothering that jump shot. Haley Jones did not play a lot in the first half. We'll take a break. Stanford in control. The NCAA Women's Championship, presented by Capital One, is brought to you by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. And we remind you the coverage of the Women's NCAA Championship continues Monday. That's tomorrow on ESPN. Start things off at high noon Eastern time. North Carolina, Alabama back in the dance after a, quite a long absence. Then Wright State takes on Arkansas. And at 4 p.m. Eastern, the game we have Mount St. Mary's taking on the University of Maryland and Michigan State, Iowa. Check out all these games. I, Michigan State, Iowa State, pardon me. And you can check out all these games either on ESPN or on the ESPN app. Brenda Fries and company debuting the number one offense in the country. And Pam, you and I got a chance to call their Big Ten Tournament Championship game. And I mean, the pace of that Terps offense and the number of players that can initiate the transition break Boy, how fun has Maryland been? And with a team that kind of came together at the last minute and showing a lot of surprise, beautiful pass by Haley Jones. I mean, Kiana Williams has been the scorer. Haley Jones has been the passer. She's been the facilitator. And that's what she is so, so good at, it is making the right decision. That is the seventh assist for Haley Jones. I mean, and part of it has to do with how strong she is. It's hard to knock her off her spot. Has a little fumble here, but it's the patience and puts the bounce pass right to the hands of Prechtel. I mean, that was a pinpoint pass by your power forward. 
Yeah, pardon me, the seven assists for Haley Jones ties a career high. Nice smile from Haley. And Coach Vanderveer, Haley Jones came in with uh, uh, quite a few expectations, a consensus high school All-American, but Coach Vanderveer, we've had a couple conversations with her, said, really, if you think about it, she's sort of still sort of freshman-y because she only played 13 games last year, got injured, no Pac-12 tournament, and of course no uh, NCAA tournament for anyone. So Jones is still kind of finding her way on the floor, but uh, she really is a, a player with a tremendous amount of talent and a very good all-around player. And we say finding her way, but for a majority of the beginning of the season, she was leading this team in points, rebounds, and assists. I mean, it was only, you know, as the season went on in Pac-12 play, did Keanu Williams start to take over some of those categories. But, I mean, for her to come back as strong as she did from that injury and the way she's played this season, and she's just scratching the surface. Yeah. So she's so versatile in her skill set. And sometimes Tara Vanderveer said she'd like to see her be even a little bit more aggressive out there. Stanford just one of five from distance in this half after hitting 12 of 21 in the first half. Still up by 36 points. Utah Valley still scrapping. Uh, clock winding down, dribble was picked up. Stanford comes away with it. There's Prechtel, all 6-5 uh, of her getting on the floor to grab the basketball. Jones just talked about her. Aggressive into the lane, and Haley got fouled. I mean, that, that's what sets Kiana Williams up for a lot of the looks she gets is the number of players for Stanford that can initiate and facilitate the offense. You know, you think about your point guard and Williams. You know, she doesn't have gaudy assist numbers necessarily, but when you have several players on your team that are averaging two or more assists, Anna Wilson, Kiana Williams, Hull, Jones, things move much easier. Yeah, that's a great point. Kiana Williams leads her team in assists at three a game, which for any team, much less an elite team, that just doesn't happen. And it's no, as you said, no knock on Kiana. It just exemplifies and shows how everybody else shares the basketball. And they're balanced in a lot of ways. This is a Stanford team that can hurt you in so many ways. This is out of their games coming in. In 27 games, seven different players led them in scoring, six different players led them in rebounding, and 10 different players led them in assists. That's a lot of talent. It is, and you know, some of that also speaks to how well they've started games. I mean, first quarters for Stanford have been very good and they've gotten out to big leads. They've won by large margins, so that allows other players down the roster to come in and give them credit. Whether you're Prechtel or Jump, you mean you've been ready for that opportunity. Lacey Hall, you've been ready. Tonight, Stanford 20 assists and only five turnovers. Jones again tying the career high with seven assists. Right now she's taking a break on the bench. Another foul drawn. That's Lexi Hall. All Pac-12 performer, also on the All Pac-12 tournament team when they swept all three games by an average of 31 points per game, dispatching of UCLA in the championship game. This last 14 games winning by at least 26 points. Only a couple of them decided in single digits. That last loss, January 22nd against UCLA, and the game before that was the one that had a lot of people uh, surprised when they went into Colorado and lost to the Buffaloes, who played brilliantly in that game, lost to them in overtime, then lost to UCLA by four in Santa Cruz, Belibi with the block. And it was after those back-to-back -back losses that Brink was put in the starting lineup for Belibi, and they've been on a roll. Yeah, speaking of Belibi, she gets her fingertips on this one. But, you know, one thing that Tara Vanderveer said about that stretch in particular, I know the loss against UCLA, is that they were out toughed. You know, she said, we weren't tough enough. We got bullied. We got pushed around. And 
What are we seeing tonight coming off of this 14-game win streak? This is not a team that's getting bullied. I mean, they are dictating every inch of this game on both ends. They're more physical. You know, they are more confident, more disciplined, and obviously the competition will continue to increase. But we saw them against UCLA in the Pac-12 championship, and they were just as dialed in. Yep. That was a team that has Michaela Anyanwere, who will be the C in the NCAA tournament, but they dominated them. This game, if you're just joining us, Stanford led by 29 to nine after the first quarter. A barrage of three-pointers, most of them by Deanna Williams, and they've not looked back. Utah Valley doing a better job of containing and they're switching man, but that's tough to guard. I mean, one bounce and right to the rim for Belibi, showing that explosiveness, that athleticism. She can dunk, but she can also do other things on the floor. Coach Vandeveer would like to see her be more committed on the defensive end, which is pretty much what every, you'll hear pretty much every coach say that, but maybe just a sophomore. With that wingspan, look at the kind of potential she has. And there are four players on the Stanford team averaging double figures, and then there's Belivi, and she's capable. Averaging eight per game, had 23 against Arizona State. Last four games, Fran has hit 10 of her 14 shots, so she has been very, very efficient. And that's a scary thing. Believe he would start on most teams in the country, and she's coming off the bench here for the Cardinal. And that's what you love about Tara Vanderveer. <laughs> Believe he gets another one, keeps this one in play. But Tara's going to coach you to your potential. Not to your production. She's going to coach you to your potential. What are you capable of? How much more do you have to give? NCAA Men's Basketball Championship continues with second round games. TBS, TNT, and True TV. You can stream games on the March Madness Live app from anywhere. For more information on game times and networks, go to NCAA. Com. So madness today, the number one, one of the number one seeds is gone already. Illinois upset by Loyola of Chicago, a team that uh, has done some things in the past to surprise people. Got to the Final Four as an 11 seed just a few years ago. This is the end of the third quarter coming up. Will they get a shot off? They will not. Donna Williams, she's got the shooting shirt on. She did some great shooting in this game with 20 points, including six threes. The Cardinal with a big lead heading to the fourth. Pat Summit, win number 1,099. The new career wins leader. Really hope Pat Summit is looking down and saying, you know, good job, Tara, keep it going. That was December 15th at Pacific, a 104 to 61 win. And Tara Vandeveer, Gino's right behind her. And yes, Gino got credit for the win today, even though he is home and uh, Chris Daly was in charge. Pat Summit, uh, well over a thousand wins, but uh, Tara Vandeveer. In her 35th season at Stanford, 42nd overall, and trying to get her team to its third title. Has a couple of them, but it was 1990 and 1992, those championships. And when they won the title in 1990, she had a point guard by the name of Jennifer Azy, who is from Tennessee, and that Final Four was played in Knoxville. And Tara said it was it would be kind of be a nice juxtaposition. She's got a point guard here in Kiana Williams, who's from San Antonio, who has an so opportunity to come home. The theme of coming home, and winning an NCAA championship. I like it, but you got to be happy for Tara. You know what she's done. I mean, when you look at the numbers, especially this time of the year, 13 Final Fours, 20 Elite Eights, 26 Sweet Sixteens. I mean, they've advanced to the Final Four seven of the last 12 tournaments. This is excellence. It's consistency. 
I mean, that's winning culture at its finest. And who does it better than Tara Vanderveer? And when you listen to her players talk about her, it's funny. You know, one of them said she came into the locker room one day and said she did the Steph Curry shimmy. Like she just walked in the locker room and gave him the shoulders. And I was like, I don't see Tara Vanderveer doing that. But she's got it in her. And uh, they said she's funny, she's competitive. And I mean, it, it's just awesome to see what she built. In. Not, not just for Stanford, but the standard of women's basketball. And I love that she wears a coat that says T-Dog on the back too. Yeah, I heard Marta Sneezik was responsible for that T-Dog nickname. <laughs> and at first they didn't want to say it in front of her, you know, but they said she likes it. She likes being called T-Dog. She's got her on the jacket. And you had mentioned in the open, uh, LaChina, that this might be, it's, it's tough to say her best coaching got, job, but I would think she would even agree her most challenging coaching job because Santa Clara County, where Stanford is located, did not allow them to play or practice at home. So 70 days between games at Maples Pavilion, they, they made stops in Vegas, they made stops in Santa Cruz, and then were on the road for all, all the other true road games. And she told us that there were times that she thought, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And she said to herself, hey, let me just give it one more week, and then another week, and then another week. And buoyed certainly by her players. She loves this team. She talks about how there's no drama on this team. So look at Kate Pay, her uh, associate head coach, a former player on the bench, and has parlayed this now into what looks like one, certainly one of her best teams ever. They're so impressive. Well, and I say it's one of her best coaching jobs because the challenges that everyone has experienced in our country over the last year are, are, are unprecedented. And so trying to navigate that, especially when you're trying to create an environment of consistency for your team, and then they tell you you've got to leave home. You know, and they didn't have a lot of time to pack. I mean, they had, well, we understand, less than 24 hours to figure things out. And to remain at the top of your game despite not having a home court, not having a resting place, not having a sense of normalcy to the nth degree. I just think she's done an, an outstanding job. Let's remember they are student athletes. The, the Stanford is one of the best schools in the country, so trying to keep that. Look at Keanu Williams. She's got the shooting shirt on. She's got her legs crossed, her arms crossed. But she felt coach kind of looking back at her. She yeah. just wanted to let her know she's still she's still in it. Coach, if you want to put me in, I'm still. Yeah, I'm right here. You know, Tara's head went to the back, and Kiana sat up and started clapping. I'm ready. And, and Tara Vanderveer talked about how emotional it was when they got back to Maples Pavilion. She said some of her players, you know, just wanted to kiss the court. I mean, it, it, they were just so happy to be home and they haven't skipped a beat and a lot of it is because of the leadership of people like Williams to uh, to help navigate. Link committed the foul, she's got three. And Williams to the line. You mentioned earlier that Josie Williams was set to transfer. You know, there was a changing change to this coaching staff. She missed a free throw there, but was going to leave Utah Valley. And Coach Nielsen came in and, and sold her on a vision that she would be a better player, that they would be a better program. And look, I mean, she's in the NCAA tournament. She has been a consistent factor in her team's success. I mean, this couldn't have turned out better for her or for the team. And Coach Nielsen says that she really is the cornerstone of this program. And as he brings in more players, wants to Wants to get the recruiting going. He's confident that he can do that, that uh, Williams will certainly be a key part, a key component. She's a first team all whack performer this year, a Utah native. Utah Valley, by the way, is in Orem, Utah, has over 41,000 students. Wow. Oh my goodness, Anna Wilson might have turned an ankle. Wilson, fifth year senior from Seattle. 
grittiest players on the team. She's gonna, she's being subbed in for. Yep, she goes out. She's got career highs across the board this season. Playing her best basketball. Look like maybe that to the right ankle. Yeah, looks like something with that holding. right ankle area at least. But I mean, how many players come into the season committing to the defensive end the way that Anna Wilson has? Haley Jones hits a turnaround. But the sacrifices that Anna Wilson has made to her role, getting in great shape, and just being the toughness, the relentless factor for this Stanford team. I mean, that's the kind of players you need to win a championship. It's not just about who's going to hit the most threes or get the highest number of assists and rebounds. And Josie Williams is having her way on this end of the floor. As you see, Anna Wilson still getting tended to, but just really impressed with the character of Anna Wilson, how she's handled all the ups and downs throughout her career. Heading back, Caitlin Knox, the athletic trainer for Stanford. And you're right, Josie Williams showing some some of that talent here, especially in the in the second half. He had that foul trouble in the first half and has come in and you hear a team still very engaged, still clapping. I love that for Utah Valley. You know, they put the first half behind them, have come out and played much harder and executed better in the second half. I mean, look, they're still up the line defensively. You know, still really playing hard. Levy fouled on the way to the basket. Utah Valley's first trip to the NCAA tournament. Here's Fran Belivi. A lot of hype coming out of high school for this sophomore from Colorado. Coach Tara Vanderveer says she's excited for her future, wants her to take care of the ball a little bit, needs to get her get better defensively. She's got a lot of talent playing ahead of her, too. But, uh, yeah, she does. And, but definitely a great upside to your point, Pam. I mean, she has all the physical attributes, all the tools, the ability. It's just learning and understanding Stanford's expectation, their system, and, and finding her place in it consistently. Our clock was uh, going off. I don't think that would have counted had it gone in. So the moot point is uh, Hannah Jump comes in. Haley Jones going out. Lexi Hall going out. That's Van Geitendeek with the ball in her hands, a freshman from Colorado. Unless something crazy happens here. Beautiful pass and facilitation. I love the way Fran Belivi is understanding how she can be effective from that high post area. You know, we saw her in some handoff action there in the first half, just knowing how she can involve her teammates and finding the different looks from, from that spot on the floor. But this whole Stanford plays Oklahoma State. They will face a Natasha Mack, who boy, Pam, 27 points today, 15 rebounds against Wake Forest. Beautiful backdoor look, another nice pass there. As Jump finishes it from Hall. Wow, beautiful pass from Lacey Hall. Stanford with like 22 assists on the evening. Look, Natasha Mack is, is a problem. I mean, she has got the wingspan, the strength, the height, the shot blocking ability to really change everything you want to do with your offense, the way she defends Hull with the mid-range jump shot. Stanford's still dialed in, but it's gonna be interesting to see how Stanford counters Mack and then how she responds to the Stanford team, which we've talked a lot about their offense, but they're also very good defensively. Tara Vanderveer, one of the best when it comes to scouting and preparing. Second in the nation in field goal percentage defense under 33% on average for this season. 
But Stanford can, uh, can pass the ball well, too. It has been a beautiful evening of Stanford offense. Backdoor cut, Levy to the finish, and then Hull to jump. Sharing is caring. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? And the NCAA Women's Championship continues with the Sweet 16. That's coming your way Saturday. The Elite Eight, followed by the Final Four, capping with the championship game Sunday, April 4th, 6 Eastern on ESPN. Coverage starts at 5 Eastern on ESPN and ESPN app. Lovely shot of downtown San Antonio. Stanford Cardinal, number one overall seed. Looking like they're going to stick around for a while. Andrew Williams on the bench. Josie Williams at the free throw line for Utah Valley. Stanford has only hit one three in the second half. 10 of 11 from two, as you see. And just seven straight threes, but still well in command. Good denial here by Utah Valley. Defense by the, by the Wolverines. You saw Josie Williams clapping on her way back up the court. They have not been lacking a fight, Pam. You know, they may be. Impressive. Stanford came out and really punched them to begin with, but Coach Nielsen has got quite a group here that you can see his imprint. You know, he talked about culture and, you know, what he wanted to do coming from BYU. Love the way Coach Judkins has run that program over the years. And Utah Valley is in good hands. Oh, I thought Williams got away with the travel, but what a second half. She gets it to go. A little bunny hop. Lizzie Williams now with 18 points. Four over her season average. And I was wondering how effective she would be against the Stanford size and their length and how athletic they are, but she does such a good job of using her body. And she's deceptively quick. She's got a little bit of quickness to her when she makes her move down low. And again, Utah Valley, this time the quarterback keeper, Carvalho. But, you know, Josie Williams has, and she'll get a nice hug from her coach. She established herself. I mean, this is the, the best team in the country coming into this tournament. And not easy to do what she's done in holding her own. I certainly did that in the second half. You mentioned she had a little bit of foul trouble in the first half. Josie Williams turning into cheerleader, as we remind you, coming up next on SportsCenter. More on uh, the number one seed with the toughest road ahead. Some upset, we talked about Illinois losing, and more on LeBron. The Lakers tested against the Suns. That's coming up right after this game is completed on ESPN and the ESPN app. Toughest run, that's a, that's a good conversation. I mean, I think when you look at Stanford in this Alamo region, they've got Louisville. You, know, you better believe Jeff Wall's team coming off of the ACC tournament loss will be ready to go. And a lot of talent. Arkansas also there. Georgia. Can't wait to see Jody Taylor's team take the floor. But South Carolina is the one and Maryland as the two. I think the Hemisphere region. And that's going to be a tough one to call. I mean, UCLA, West Virginia in their win. But I think everyone's eyes are on the UConn-Baylor, you know, situation that could happen. Obviously, a lot would have to go on between here and there. But Kim Mulkey and, and Coach Gino Oriema meeting head-to-head. -head. Coach Oriema should be back and, and ready to go by then if that does happen. But 
That possibility, Pam, is very intriguing. Yeah, we're all looking forward to that the possibility. The Riverwalk region. First three since nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter for Stanford. It was Jana Van Geitenbeek, her 13-3 of the season. Getting a lot of playing time. The bench for Stanford today has accounted for 35 points. We've not seen Tiana Williams for a while. The Mercado region is interesting too. With NC State is the one and Texas A&M is the two. And I think Rutgers is the sleeper in that region. You know, and you look at Vivian Stringer's group. You know they're going to be tough defensively. Defense travels. I do put a lot of emphasis on that end of the floor, even though we love the big shots in March. But I just think Corella Garantes is dynamic. It can be a spoiler. I'm just saying, Pam. Here's Kiana Williams. We're going to be speaking with her once this game is over. It's, she was just spectacular. Came out of the gates just shooting threes. You see the 20 points. She had 17 at the half, 5 of 8 from three at dis, uh, from distance in the first half. And what a homecoming for her. Meanwhile, Utah Valley, what a season they had. They're going to finish up 13 and 7. Congratulations for them getting to their first NCAA tournament. I'm sure their student athletes will never forget it and they're going to tell people that they got to play against a pretty darn good Stanford team too. <laughs> Absolutely. Stanford team that could go all the way. We've got some games to play but they're looking good to start. Stanford shot 56% from the floor, 45% from three as they win at 87 to 44. The higher seeds, no upsets on day one. In the NCAA tournament, Stanford will play Oklahoma State in a couple of days in the second round. As uh, Utah Valley, just uh, too much skill, talent, and depth on the other sideline. And Stanford has won its 15th straight game, their 26th game of the year. And Kiana Williams, the San Antonio native, played very well as soon as she hit the floor tonight. Uh, 23 for 23. Kiana Williams was brilliant to start. Put her team at ease with her shot-making ability. One, two steps behind three on the catch. Didn't matter. She was just ready to fire it up and let it go. And continuing what we saw from the Pac-12 tournament, she's got the eye of the tiger coming home to San Antonio. And she has got this Stanford team ready to roll as they started their NCAA tournament journey tonight.